bitch in the group and obviously that caused some issues and now they're beefing on the fucking timeline which is fucking wild to see but yeah what can you do what can you do let's move on let's talk about the topics at hand first topic to talk about um ian schwartzman i'm sure most of you don't know who this guy is but this guy on the screen is joe bundon's manager and it's fucking hilarious all the blowback he's been getting on social so if you don't if you know already shannon sharp had an amazing interview with cat williams um last time i checked i think the interview was at 25 million views or something it just came out the other day amazing interview where cat williams goes scorched earth destroys fucking everybody and um, really funny really witty really eye opening and just an amazing kind of conversation starter around loads of topics concerning the entertainment industry like gatekeeping like hating like rituals um like paying your dues like hustle whatever it may be right everybody got it from joe rogan to Cedric the entertainer to fucking pdd to tj jakes it was fucking every it was a fucking blast to fucking listen to right amazing interview for some reason ian schwartzman joe budden's manager decided to come out on twitter and give shannon sharp some advice even though this interview dropped a couple of days ago and it's on like yeah, okay austin casey said it's on 32 million views ian schwartzman decided to give um shannon sharp some unsolicited advice about how we should approach his content look at what this guy says the cat and shannon interview was great 25 million views in 48 hours is even greater but can you imagine how much bigger of a play it would have been if this was behind a subscription platform that shannon had set up under his control so essentially shannon sharp is just saying hey why doesn't why doesn't shannon sharp put his content behind a paywall like i advise my client to do because that's one of the things that has annoyed me about this new version of joe budden um i stopped listening to joe budden podcast when rory and moe left i was one of the idiots I was one of the naive people that developed a bit of a parasocial relationship with Joe Budden and that whole crew of people. I thought they were actually friends. And then when that kind of broke down the way that it did and Joe kind of dismissed their contribution and acted as if they weren't really a part of the crew and they weren't, they weren't really a part of the fucking making of the podcast and it ended really sour, it kind of made me not listen. And to be honest, I don't really listen to New Rory or Moore that much either. I've kind of stopped listening to both camps because it was just, you know, it was just annoying to kind of go through that whole thing and see the these guys end their really successful podcast off the back of just not being able to sit down the table and talk as friends but one of the things that's annoyed me about this new version of joe is that since he's had some rough runnings with cancellations and stuff he started to now put his content behind a paywall as a way to kind of like spite the fat no as a way to kind of spite his attractors and to also it feels like it's like a test to see like who his true fans are so if you're a true fan of Joe's, you won't care about paying $5, $10, $20 for some content that should be on YouTube, really. So most of his content, especially if it's controversial, especially if something people are, are kind of like pushing him to say, he'll put it behind a paywall. I think the Diddy conversation was behind a paywall. I think the replies to Drake, when him and Drake are going through it back and forth, was behind a paywall. And just recently, um, the interview with Dr. Umar, that should have been a, you know, loads of millions of views interview was put behind a paywall and it's fucking annoying i think all that kind of practice is super it's super short-sighted it's super fucking um what's that term that brennan used to use it's super scrooge mcducky to put all your big content that you know people are going to watch always behind the paywall and never ever release it to the public it's fucking annoying anyway they now think that this is the way to go uh you know in the long term the issue with that is that obviously all your metrics aren't there publicly part of the reason why people put these big interviews i'd imagine on platforms like youtube is because the metrics are readily available you can clearly see the views the likes i think last time i checked the likes were like one million or something um austin casey said um what do you call it the public the video at the moment is now 32 million so clearly that stuff helps you in the long term because what it ends up doing is that if brands come in they can see what your numbers are and they can give you a contract, you know, accordingly. So don't be surprised in a few months, maybe a year, if you hear Shannon Sharp signed a massive deal with like ESPN or some new streaming company for like hundreds of millions of dollars. It's perfectly possible, especially because the other day when I was streaming, um, I just recently subscribed to Shannon Sharp's show that he does with um, the Ocho, the guy, um, the, other, the, the footballer as well. Um, I think he used to be a running back and it's called a nightcap. He does like a stream. I think it's like a daily stream during a week about sports and shit and i randomly saw it on my home page and it was live and at the, at the time i saw when it was live it was on like forty six thousand live viewers 
which is a lot for a YouTube live stream. I don't know if you guys watch a lot of live streams, but live streams on YouTube don't get like hundreds and thousands of live viewers. Some do, but that was on 46,000 live viewers. So clearly, Shannon Sharp knows what he's doing. Clearly, he has an audience. Clearly, people like what he says. Clearly, he's doing something right. So to be giving that guy a fucking oh he's a wide receiver sorry my, my bad um green um rogier he's a wide receiver he said my bad my bad i didn't know i didn't know i don't know about anything about football please forgive me forgive me forgive me forgive me um for them those guys to fucking chastise or to give shannon any kind of fucking advice it's so fucking annoying it really fucking is and just goes to show how short of side they are and also goes to show these guys really walk into rooms thinking they're the smartest people in the room that kind of hubris and that kind of confidence is fucking insane, especially when you think of all the times that Joe has got in his own way and fucked up deals himself. And now he's at the point where he's got already a kind of baked in, you know, fan base. He's got his Joe Vengers out there who are going to support him regardless. So if anything, he's making it in spite of his mistakes, not because he's some sort of great genius, in my personal opinion. Anyway, everybody rightfully chastises um, Ian about the fucking comment that he made. They destroyed him, obviously, in the chat um so in the replies one person said here his audience is not as niche and invested like joe's fans shannon did it with the right way the subscription thing is meant for super fans that cat interview was for the people and meant to reach the wider audience exactly another person says of course you would immediately go to gouging fans for money exactly another one says what makes sense for the whole thing to be behind a paywall maybe two-thirds of it and the rest of behind the patreon but it would have leaked anyway he got the response he wanted and he's monetizing like crazy on youtube it's like people forget monetization on youtube especially at that kind of level of views is pretty good i'd imagine a 32 million view um video what's that gonna go with if your cpm is decent that might be like a hundred thousand that might be in a hundred thousands of that one video so you're gonna eat pretty well off that another one says wouldn't have got 25 million views if you put it behind if he had if you would have made more money on it um, another one says thank god shannon sharp is not managed by you exactly another one says yeah would he would have went viral um if that was the case another one if i feel like you're pushing a narrative because this is what you all have done but i think you and joe overestimate how little podcast type content matters to the average joe exactly only dedicated fans are gonna turn gossip and um, barbershop talk barber banter from public figures into a monthly bill exactly that's the thing people don't assume that is a real point like i think they over assume how big they are but again this is Joe Budden. He honestly does think he's as big as Joe Rogan. Another one says, you dress dramatically decrease the network effect putting this behind a paywall. Part of the reason why this is as big as it is, is it's gone as far as it has because it was released publicly and seeped into the meme culture and internet within the first 48 hours. So clearly everybody's kind of roasting and torturing this guy's ass, right? Now, when you get roasted and torched, what happens? Do you come back and apologize? Do you hold your hands up and say, hey, maybe I got it wrong? Do you just ignore it and keep it moving and kind of learn your lesson privately? Or do you do what most of these fucking donuts do and kind of seek sympathy? Of course you seek sympathy. Look at what he tweeted the next day. Went to a funeral today for a very close friend of mine that recently passed away and it checked me right back into my healthy emotions and reminded me what's important in life. So you came out there and said some hot shit, right? You came out there and said a very controversial statement about a very beloved and very well-received interview from a very beloved and adored fucking individual in Cat Williams and obviously Shannon Sharp. You said something very controversial. It was a hot take. People flamed you for it. And then the next day, you start fucking seeking sympathy and saying, oh, kind of using your dead friend's, your dead friend's funeral as a fucking human shield how pathetic you have to be as an adult to do that it's not that big of a deal sometimes in the business of hot takes in my opinion in the business of hot takes sometimes you get it wrong in the business of hot takes sometimes you get it wrong you fuck up it is what it is that's the nature of the game if you want to throw out a hot take if you want to be a contrarian you're gonna sometimes get it wrong what you can't do is this you're allowed to just ignore it and pretend it didn't happen you're allowed to double down or triple down but what you can't do is this you can't start as Koyla saying virtue signaling you can't use your friend's death as a fucking shield that is beyond disgusting to be completely honest 
that is beyond reprehensible to do such a thing because really and truly it's not that big of a deal you threw out an opinion you threw out a comment an observation about something people didn't receive it the way you wanted to receive it you can explain if you want but for the most part you don't need to use your dead friend's fucking funeral as a way to kind of protect yourself let's see some of the replies what people said to him crazy how shit like that can be what makes you feel human yeah all right okay so people are again people are being nice in the comments but i wouldn't have been nice i would have just said imagine using your friend's death as a fucking human shield absolutely disgusting anyway moving on from that one you know what's really funny about this whole escapade so out of the blue um there was a joe budden podcast discord chat which i actually need to do actually i need to do a fucking discord chat and we'll probably do one on here on the live stream but there was a joe budden fucking discord chat and <laughs> and for some reason ian got on it and danny from the stuff reported on it and ian got on the discord chat and you know what's really funny this discord chat with ian that joe budden jumped on is proof to me why joe budden is a terrible friend and why everybody around him he honestly ends up burning ian schwartzman is his manager right that's his fucking manager he's been his manager for a fucking very 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 long time they're very close they've got a very close friendship and business relationship he says this crazy shit Joe Budden on his own podcast kind of starts hating on Shannon himself, right? He hates himself. He's like saying, oh, his his interview with Cat Williams didn't do well because of COVID. And he says something like, he says some weird shit like, oh, Sha he, he felt like Cat Williams was like inspired by him or something. Like he was channeling his spirit or some nonsense like that. But there was a lot of like slick talk from Joe on the Joe Budden podcast that made it sound like he thought Shannon could have done a better job because he thinks of himself as a better interviewer. Cool. So he kind of echoed um, Ian's thoughts in another way. Ian goes on the Discord to defend himself. Then Joe jumps on the Discord and guess what he does? Bitch, you guessed it. He kicks Ian's back in too. Ian is the one out here fighting for Joe, right? And Joe jumps on this Discord and kicks Ian's back in because the whole internet's kicking his back in. This goes to show that Joe Budden is no one's friend. His only friend is him. For his controversial Joe Joe Budden goes off on Ian, his manager, for his controversial comments about the Shannon Sharp and Cat Williams interview. It wasn't meant to take away, it was to add on to a thought process that he may not be thinking at the moment. And it was to empower him, not take away from him. That's the problem. That right there is the problem. Who says that he needs your advice? I didn't I didn't ask Joe. I didn't expect him to take my advice. In <laughs> fact, my comment of putting it out publicly. Nobody while this black man is on top of the world needs to read the advice. You, Joe, you came out and said Joe. Joe. <laughs> Hold on. No, 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 no. Joe turning into a black and white thing is fucking disgusting. Your manager's white and now you're using his whiteness against him because everybody in the internet is kicking his back in. Why don't you get a black manager then? Why do you have, like, honestly, what a disgusting individual, man. <laughs> let them go. Let them talk. Yeah. What I said. Joe, you, you specifically made a comment on, uh, maybe it was Kevin Hart or, or, uh, shannon sharp's interviewing ability while he was on top but that's that's directly taking away from the interview exactly. what i said was to empower the moment and make it more powerful of no, a takeaway no no and no and that's what i'm saying to you joe is the king of that though gaslighting you can repeat back what he said and use it as a point and then he'll just deny it and say no nah, it didn't happen <laughs> you can repeat back exactly what he said and he just says no nah, it didn't no but it did no it didn't but it did <laughs> what do you say the, the moment was empowered with or without what you had to say that doesn't that's take what away people from... are saying if it's the yeah, most so, viewed so... interview on youtube two black people just talking some mm -hmm. what makes you think that that needs even more empowering one two Mm -hmm. I was very specific with what I said, which was, what do y'all say to the people that say Shannon's interview skills are A, B, and C? That was my question to the panel. But what I said... <laughs> when you're pussy to say what you actually think, and that's the thing that's funny, the Cat Williams interview, he was going after everybody, Diddy, T.D. Jakes, 
if anything, that's what made the interview way more, you know, compelling to watch because you saw a guy who's untethered, who has no feel, who has no filter, who's clearly not, you know, under the thumb of the man, is clearly not kissing people's feet or kissing the hand of somebody to get in the industry. You clearly saw what it means to have like fuck you money and say fuck you. So he does it and he does it very, you know, in a very comedic way. If anything, that's the reason why it was more entertaining because he was unfiltered. We saw how Joe Budden acted when the fucking Cassie and Diddy news first came to light. He didn't want to speak about it. He was acting as if like he was also involved in these freak offs and he didn't want to bring attention to himself. He was so afraid, even to this day, to talk about Diddy. To this day, fair enough. Maybe he has a point, you know? Maybe he has a point to be scared of talking about Diddy because Diddy legitimately, you know, is a crazy dude. We're hearing stories about him allegedly chasing fucking Suge Knight down the street. Did you hear that story? Allegedly, it wasn't Suge Knight that was chasing Diddy around LA. It was fucking Diddy that was chasing Suge Knight around LA allegedly we're hearing stories about him blowing up fucking kid cuddy's car we're hearing stories about him and, and his goons allegedly dangling wale from his feet from a fucking balcony somewhere like the guy's fucking crazy but still this is some sicko psycho shit where he's been accused of rape and all such and all other nonsense um pertaining to sexual harassment and joe was scared to speak about it he was fucking scared he didn't want to mention it guess what happened of course he got flamed for it so for him to sit there and talk about what suggestions and interview titles that bro you're not you're not even honest on your own platform you can't even be untethered and unfiltered on your own platform because you're worried about the skeletons that it might kind of draw up from your own past get out of here said as far as the interview was mm -hmm. wow amazing to see two black people break all these records it's insane inspiring for me and as a content creator i'm home saying yeah let's kick some ass i have not had this talk with ian because i don't give a f about this this ain't that big of a deal to me but if ian were to wake up on his personal twitter and say something that were to really affect things we would talk about it but that's exactly right i, I would expect <laughs> you to but i don't feel like what i said was cause for that type of conversation to ever come up because I have enough discretion to know when I'm saying something that's offensive in a way that would have an effect big enough to bring up a conversation like that. Yo, this is not, I hate that we took this to yo, a black if, and white. Th yo, imagine your, imagine your client, imagine your manager, imagine your business partner starts chastising you for the same opinions he's espoused on his own podcast. If I'm Ian, I'm fucking hot right now. Joe basically said the same thing that he said, but he implied it and he said it vaguely on a fucking podcast, right? Listen to the podcast now. I think it's four hours long or something. Most of it, it just includes Jay basically sneak hating and pocket watching and shit about the whole Shannon Sharp, Cat Williams thing. Yes, he was congratulatory, but he was really hating in a way. If anything, Ian just basically jumped off of that and used that fucking template as something to kind of base his tweet off. If I'm, if I'm being honest, I think the obviously the pod was recorded, I think, before the tweet. Thing, because what this boils down to for me is just letting people have their moments. That's not a white thing, a black thing. If, if, a, if a white person... Isn't that a weird comment to make, though? It's very, I don't know, is that a very woke thing? Is that a very American thing? Let people have their moment. What does that mean? That means people are incapable of having, people are incapable of being criticized because they've done something great. I think it's fairly okay to somebody to say, it's, you're all right to criticize somebody, even if they do a great thing, but then you should also be okay when people blast you back for it. That's the issue I have with people like him. He doesn't, he wants to have his hot takes. He wants to be a contrarian. But then when somebody pushes back against his hot take and his contrarian views, he suddenly starts crying about it. It's like, bro, if you want to say what you want to say, say what you want to say. But you also have to be open and willing and you know, open and ready and aware that some people might push back and say what they want to say back to you. It just is what it is. If Brad Pitt, said, if Jerry Seinfeld sat down and did an interview and it did 100 million views, I would want that person to have his moment uninterrupted with what the fans think of how he could have gone, what he should have did, how it would have been more successful. If what the with mind your business, it's the same thing I'd be. No, it's the internet. As soon as it's on the internet, it's everybody's business. 
unfortunately. If you put out content on the internet, everybody has um, an ability to have an opinion about it because it's available on the fucking internet. This idea that you can't speak about certain things, it's like, what are these fucking codes of conduct? What the fuck is the internet? There is no code of conduct. The only code of conduct that exists is that what can you get away with until you get fucking banned? That's the only code of conduct that, that exists. There is no code of conduct on the internet. It's the fucking internet. It's fucking lawless. There's videos of fucking dead babies on Twitter and shit. Like, it is what it is. If you don't want to see that sort of shit, you don't want to see it. But come on, man. This whole fucking behavioral standards on the internet is fucking insane. Especially coming from someone like him. Imagine being lectured on your behavior on the internet by bloody Joe Budden. Get lost. Saying the flip. So when you not letting people have their moment, it's looked at very differently than Sassy Q from Missouri who's tweeting about the interview it's not the same i guess i i don't look at it like oh when i say something it's like the most it's important i just think of it as like oh this is an interesting thought and everyone kept twist it doesn't matter everyone twisted my words said i said paywall when i said nothing of the sort i said subscription it was like i said it was <laughs> okay mr white man okay mr ian schwartzman what does fucking subscription mean then if it's not a paywall this is how you know he's Joe. This is how you know him and Joe Budden are friends because he's doing the whole semantic thing that Joe is fucking famous for. Some, Joe is known as semantics man, and Ian's doing the same thing. I didn't say paywall. This is what you said. The Cat Williams and Shannon Sharp interview was great. Twenty-five million views in forty-eight hours is even greater. But can you imagine how bigger it would play it would have been if it was behind a subscription platform? Behind a subscription platform is the same thing as saying behind a paywall because bitch, you guessed it. A paywall is a subscription platform. <laughs> Don't you hate it when people insult your intelligence by making it seem as if like what you read wasn't what they said? It's like, bro, what the fuck is this, bro? How are you running propaganda for yourself? How are you trying to do that? How are you trying to run prop for yourself? Like, this is not fucking, you're not that clever. You could not mind control us with a tweet. We can read the tweet ourselves. Fucking hell. Me thinking of how to empower him even further i don't i wasn't trying to take away from his moment everyone's deducting from my first two lines of what i tweeted which was holy shit, this is amazing holy shit, the interview was great look at the amount of views we haven't seen this before that's right on the anyway uh big up danny for the stop check out danny for the stop's channel he's a really good follower as well i'm a big fan of his um can we say this first ian schwartzman's hot take isn't bad this is a decent take. There's nothing wrong with this. People talk about this all the time when it comes to being a creator. When it comes to being a creator, people speak about this all the time. Hey, what would happen if creators were empowered um, and if they had more of a lion's share of the fucking revenue that comes through, if they had more of a handle on the analytics so they could use that to fucking negotiate better deals for themselves, or if they cut out a middleman, what if they cut out the third man? Big up NJ Ranger, appreciate you, brother. Almost choked on my bagel bite, you funny MF. Mm -hmm. Go in, 100. Big up, big up, big up, NJ Ranger. Yeah, bagels are goated, man. Bagels are fucking goated. I've switched from, I'm a, I used to be a really big sliced bread man. I used to be big on the sliced bread. But in the last couple of years, I've switched primarily to fucking bagels. And you know the bagels I get? I get the thin ones. I think I've got a packet over there I could show you, actually. I've got a pair of thin, I've got some thin bagels. Let's, let's do some bagel chat. Let's do a bit of bagel chat. If we're talking about bagels, this is what I got. These to me are goaded, the thin ones. These thin bagels are the best, right? They're kind of like half the size. These are the ones I prefer. They taste so nice, they're not as fucking dense as the other ones. These bagels are fucking goated, goated. Put some fucking scrambled eggs on top of these with a little bit of fucking, um, you know with a little bit of uh butter or olive oil what space guy said that's not a bagel <laughs> really that's not a bagel <laughs> what is it then <laughs> if that's not a bagel what is it is it like a burger bun with a hole what are you saying space guy is this a burger bun with a hole is that what you're trying to say is this a burger bun with a hole <laughs> <laughs> it's a it's a ham bagel. <laughs> <laughs>
it's a ham bagel. <laughs> that is not a bagel. Okay, fair play, fair play. Oh yeah, I forgot. I'm talking to Amer. I'm talking to mostly Americans, in it. You guys have the fat bagels. You guys have the the fucking the bagels that fucking sit in your fucking liver. Yeah, I don't need that shit. I don't, I, I, I don't need pounded yam bagels. That's what you guys have. You guys have pounded yam bagels, man. Those things are fucking dense. I need just a little light thing. I mean, I'm European, man. I mean, I'm European. I'm suave. I'm sophisticated. <laughs> I eat my bagel like that, you know? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm going to start bagel shaming. That's a new thing. We're going to start bagel shaming. Anyway, anyway, anyways, anyways.